Okay guys, welcome back. You're tuning into the SCPL. We're currently watching White versus Naz. Naz currently 2-0 up as we head into our third game here. So a little bit surprising. Yeah, uh, it is absolutely surprising. Uh, I definitely wouldn't have expected... Well, it depends on the roster yeah. that White Clan brings, right? They're a very big clan. They have lots of talented players, but it's a, a huge skill uh, discrepancy. Lots of variability there. So you never know what to expect uh, against the players that you've never seen before. So we're, we're through all of those. Actually, I think we have seen Cast before, but, but Haji's coming up next. Sorry for the spoiler. And uh, I definitely That's think that he could have a better shot at bringing it back. Yeah, now uh, we are going to be heading into this third game pretty soon. I'm just having a few weird problems getting the names to appear. So just trying to fix that in the background. Uh, but, I mean, we've had a pretty good series so far. The games, while, I mean, we do have Naz up 2-0, they could have gone either way. I think the first game was a little bit more one-sided. Uh, but that CVC came down to a little bit of mismicro there in the early game. And just the choice to go for that second gas very, very quickly for Eon Zerg, so... Yeah. Uh, Eon played that super, super well. Uh, having the Winning the first Muta fight, obviously huge advantage and uh, as soon as he microed against the scourge that was that was gonna do it so yeah his uh his his focus his build was superior he executed it uh you know to perfection he gets the win and now coming up next it is uh well i get i don't want to spoil the players That's fine. but you should show them on the screen too. yeah but we can show them on the screen now everything's ready we're gonna have haji for white clan and now haji actually played two games last round did win both of them he is our protoss player on the left hand side of your screen and on the right we have the race picking captain of Naz, a very very strong uh, North American uh, Protoss player normally but gonna be playing Zerg here uh, he did go three for three last round according to the versus opponents race stats he's actually five for one uh, in against Protoss which wouldn't really surprise me as ZBC is well as ZBP very very strong uh, but I certainly have some testing with that to do after the stream. But either way, we're going to be <laughs> heading on to Neo Ground Zero now. Neo Ground Zero, we saw a PvP on here before. Uh, it was kind of an interesting game. We've actually sent a lot of Zerg and Protoss players been sending out here. Uh, very few Terrans, uncharacteristically, for this map. We've actually already had six EVPs in the SCPL Round 3 in the show matches. So, going to be another ZBP here. Can Dragon even it out a little bit? It's going to be White Haji. Versus Naz's Dragon in Game 3 of our second serve today. Let's head into the game. Starting us off here in the top left hand position, we do have the red Protoss fighting for white. It's going to be Haji. Yep, and his opponent in the upper, uh, wait, in the bottom right-hand corner, in, and get this, Kicks, you'll never guess what color this is. In the, the Malachite, this is uh, Naz's player, Dragon. Look up Malachite, it's that color, I promise you. Okay, what we need to do is we need to get, like, a color chart of all of these cool color names so I can learn them and then like everyone else will be we'll be playing like 4D chess with the colors like a taste dosis no one, will be they like they won't even stand a chance the colors will just like surrender they'll GG instantly it's not even gonna be close well it's like uh taste dosis will be sat there in the next ASL cast or KSL or you'll be sat there with our toast so our toast will be like the red protoss and you're like actually it's terracotta <laughs> oh this is a that's not a color kicks Terracotta is a color. I guarantee you it's not. I'm fairly 100%. certain there's a color wheel color called Terracotta Red, but maybe I'm wrong. It's not this right, color though. Terracotta color. Ah! Yeah, it looks like more like a peach to me. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not this color, but still. Alright, alright. I'll let it slide this time, Kicks, but don't let it happen again. <laughs> I'm sorry, boss of colors, rapid. <laughs> That's me. Okay, all right, the actual game. A thing that is happening on our screen. Yeah, I mean, we've got a Forge Fast Six Man coming up from Haji. I mean, it could be a cannon rush. 
uh, maybe wanted to get a little bit of payback for his uh, teammate. But he's going to be building a cannon back at home to defend against this. Going to scout that it is, in fact, a Petri first. So other than that, not really too much going on. Going to be a pool coming up yeah. behind the hatchery as well. Yeah, and we do see uh, a one cannon here. I, I don't think he's going to do anything crazy like build a second one. Obviously, he's just now scouting that there's a, a hatchery coming up. He doesn't know what to expect, but if he got in the main and didn't see a gas, obviously he'd know that he didn't need another one. So it is cannon before Nexus. Uh, super does, safe way to open up. He does need to be careful, though. A little wrong move, and that probe is going to fall in the lava. That's not a place where probes <laughs> are supposed to go. <laughs> That's true. It's a dangerous life as a probe. Thankfully, uh, they can float, so that is, of course, super helpful. Yeah, but we've, I guess we've never seen if they can float over liquids, so... Well, yeah, like, how does repulsor technology work in the 21st century? I mean, in StarCraft 2, technically, there was that... Uh, I can't remember what the map was, but it was like the map with like uh, shallow water everywhere. Can you remember that, or is that just me? It was like from Heroes of the Swarm, I think, or Heart of the Swarm, even. Yeah, Heart of the Storm, that one. I, I don't know. Yeah, it was like some beach map, and uh, there, there was technically water everywhere there, the probes were running over, so maybe they figured it out by StarCraft 2 lore, I mean there was a little bit of a time skip between StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2, so uh, maybe that could have come into it. Not really too much going on behind this though, Gateway coming up, Nexus obviously on the way, uh, back at home in Agi Space, nothing really coming up, Dragon not really going into any tech just yet, but he is going to be taking his third base at the other natural. Yeah, uh, so third base coming up right now. I don't think that's going to be... Oh, yeah, the probe is actually already on the way to scout it. Uh, Haji seems to know his... Well, okay, he turns around. Never mind. Yeah, he All was right. checking I the post he... uh, I think he thinks there may be a Hydra pull coming his way. Yeah, anytime you, you check up there and you see or you, you think you know that there's only two bases, that can mean some crazy stuff. So if he overreacts and throws down some extra cannons, then we know that he thought, oh, wait, there's no third. Because uh, it's really surprising to see him not scout, uh, you know, continually scout north, I guess. So, I guess mind game successful. Yeah, I mean, I guess the one benefit that Haji does have by checking this base is Dragon has actually expanded to what I would class as the closer third. So, uh, obviously, going vertically, I think there's a little bit of a difference uh, in terms of distance because you have those bases in between them. So maybe that's why Haji thinks that he should have expanded to the bottom left, but I mean, he's scouting out this third dead last. Is that going straight into the uh, into the natural? He's actually going to see a drone transferring here, which maybe he'll think is going to be to take a third base or something. Uh, but the zealots, oh, zerglings even should be able to take down that zealot, as long as uh, he doesn't get too good of a surface area. I don't know, man. You need at least 25 links for a zealot. Like, that's that's my philosophy. Uh, finally, Kaji will scout the uh, actual third base, and so maybe he'll have to kind of reconfigure what he thought was going on here. Wow. Uh, keep in mind, what we're coming up against is like kind of a Bisu build kind of deal. Uh, so that's, uh, it's going to be, you know, Corsair DT, but okay, and he's adding on a couple of cannons right now, so just making sure that he is rock solid. Yeah, he's obviously scouting out the third, but he knows there is Hydralis out on the middle of the map now, or at least at the front of the base, so that's going to be kind of important. The Hydralisks, yeah. first two he's are going to be heading up seven... to the top left. Yeah, he's going to get 973 right in the face, and so obviously throwing down as many cannons as you can uh, is exactly what he needs. And if he pulls the probes, yeah, he's actually going to be totally uh, you know, solid to defend this. Oh, one Zealot actually pulls back all the Hydras, so it's going to get yeah. plenty of time for these cannons to finish. Yeah, it looks like the cannon's gonna finish up as well. It's actually gonna be a 10-6-3, so uh, not getting the memo, uh, putting his drone in the wrong oh, place, but... Okay, kicks. Wow, we're really just gonna have to... <laughs> the good old 10-6-3, man. Just not as good a build. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate, but the Hydralists are gonna be able to be in a position to attack the wall. Just make it very, very annoying. Plus one is going to finish though, so that's going to be a bit of a benefit for our Protoss player here. Oh, I see that, and that's actually quite, or going to be quite close. Looks like the uh, gateway's being forced down first. Is this going to finish? Oh my god. This is so close. Oh my god, there's no way, oh my. Oh, 
I think it was cancelled. Yeah, he doesn't have I... plus one attack. Oh my god, what? You're oh, kidding wow. me. What a, what a god, god, dragon. Whoever's got dragon in CPL, like, what, that, oh man. CPL? That's... Yeah. Dragon wouldn't be in CPL, what the heck? No, he would be the coach. Oh, okay, yeah, good point. I was like, yeah, hold on, be, whoa. Either... <laughs> Let me explain the concept of CPL to you, Kix. Like, there's one player that's good, and then the rest of them, uh, you know. Like me, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's good there's there's good and better okay there's 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 great and greater let's put it that way well i mean i guess it's better than dumb and dumber but i don't know yeah, if yeah, great yeah. and greater would be such a good comedy it'd just be it's kind of annoying it'd be yeah, kind of like watching big it, bang theory be just like really positive about anything and not actually cause any controversy okay all right that's a bad idea for a movie kicks all right, flying the Corsair right over the Hydra's. Ooh, bad idea. Uh, so that's going to lose even more health. Hydra's not actually trying to snipe off cannons. I think they might be able to have a, a little bit of a try there, but uh, macroing up behind this, I think, is absolutely the right call. Yeah, he's adding on his fourth base. He's adding on his third gas as well. Going to be moving up to a Queen's Nest, so actually a Spire in the main. I thought that was going to be a Queen's Nest for a quick hive, but... One thing that I neglected to mention a little bit earlier is Dragon is actually on match point at the moment. So if he does win this game, he is going to take the series for Naz. So, uh, so far he's doing a really, really good job. I mean, the one benefit that Dragon has by race picking is not only does he know extensively how to play PvZ, so he knows all of the timings really, really well. It makes him a little bit better at ZVP by default. A lot of Zerg players... Maybe don't play uh, Zerg at all, so I'm sorry, they don't play Protoss, so they don't really know it from both sides. Uh, but Dragon's seen both sides of the coin here, Nil. He's going to know when Protoss are going to be a little bit weaker, he's going to be know when he can move in and snipe buildings like that. And I mean, that was an amazing pick-off on that forge, and that's really delayed. I can't Hachi. believe he got that. That was the last second possible. Now, not only do you have to rebuild the forge if you want to like ever get that upgrade ever again, and he is, it's just gonna be hopelessly far behind. I yeah. mean, it's cool, you've got High Templar, you're gonna have Storm and Kydarian Amulet, but like you're not gonna, like your Zealots are just gonna be so neutered without that plus one. Yeah, without plus one as well, and if you think about it, you'd be about halfway through plus two at this point as well, so. Dragon is in an unbelievable situation. We've got Lurkers coming in as well at both of his bases, or both of his naturals even, to really help just cement this. He's droning up an insane amount back at home, and he's actually gone ahead of the Protoss in supply right now. Haji is in a pretty awkward situation right now. I'm not really sure if Haji knows where to go from here. I'm not really sure if he was expecting to be in a position like this against Dragon. Wow, man, every single game this series has seen some sort of crazy opener that gives whoever's on Naz just such a sick advantage. First game, or second game was the or last game, I guess, uh, Cannon Rush, or it was first game, yeah. Cannon Rush, second game, uh, Muta's uh, just popping out very well executed there by, uh, by Eon Zerg, minimal Zerglings made. Um, and this game, like this opener that he did that catches that forge, like, you... Like I want to say that he planned it, but like that's just too close. What a yeah. What a series of unfortunate events here for White. And to be fair, they are playing. Uh, they are not playing their strongest players. And every time, I you got to point that out because sometimes they'll bring out like like Famas E, and that guy just walks over people. Um, but this time around, it is uh, it's a little bit more of a struggle for a team that you would expect to be doing uh, very well. I mean, you can't all put it down to the players either, because Cast, uh, Spy, Haji, all have done an incredible job in previous rounds, so yeah, it's almost yeah, like Naz has White's number here. It looks like they've studied what their opponents are kind of gonna do, kind of... I, I mean, I like to call this, but obviously it could just be blind luck, but they seem to have picked builds that counter exactly what their opponent likes to do. So it does feel planned to me, and I mean... Naz did a very, very good job against White last round as well, so it's not entirely uh, without fault that Naz would be ahead, and obviously uh, I do like to say this quite a lot because people seem to think that White, because they're Korean, are going to be just 10 times better than everyone else, but 
Naz or White have had some close games, and one thing I've noticed throughout this game as we see this DT run in, uh, throughout the SCPL, players are doing better and better against White as we go along, so there's definitely been a lot of improvement from all of the rosters. I love how the DT doesn't one-shot drones because they have a carapace and there's no plus one. That's hilarious to me, Kick. Yeah, you Can I tell you how funny it is? To watch a DT not one-shot drones, oh my god, get me out of this game. Yeah, the, uh, so that's a big deal, right? It means it triggers the notification, the DTs are just overall less effective, and the forge is spinning, right? Yeah, so we're about to have plus one finish, so that won't be a thing. But for one brief moment, I got to see something I don't usually. Yeah, I, I mean, plus one comes in so early that... It's very, very rare that you would ever see that, because Protoss just don't go for DTs before plus one against Zerg. It just doesn't make any sense. And I mean, this yeah. we're going to see Hive coming in for Dragon. Looks like the shuttle did get taken down. I actually misplaced my camera slightly there, but triple Evolution Chamber going to be going for plus one attack on range, plus one attack on melee, and two Carapace. Going to have a Nidus Canal coming in back at home as well. And it looks like Haji... Taking a little bit of a supply advantage again, gonna say my plus one damage is done. Let's see if I can do some damage, but just look at the units Dragon has back to defend this. Damn, yeah, a Dragon's gonna be rock solid here. Lurker's burrowing just in time. Sure, there's a couple of observers, uh, but I mean, it's just a massive Lurker field. The Sunken, the Sim City, it's just, uh, it's just pretty good. So, I mean, that's a lot of Protoss, right? Let's not get it twisted, but uh, does he have Nidus tech up? Uh, looks like that's a no. So he's gonna try to come in for a flank here, and I think even that is just gonna be fantastic. Storms coming through are actually pretty sick. The Zerg is being pushed back. But let's just wait until this flank hits. Yeah, the trouble is or he actually, actually he can just counter across the map. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna counter, but he does need to be careful. He doesn't want to lose this natural of his fourth base. I mean, he's actually got some really heavily stacked lurkers behind this. And here we go, it looks like he is going to come in for this flank. There's units on both sides of this Protoss army now. Looks like Crackling has finished. And this huge, huge army from Dragon coming in. Going to cut off reinforcements. And going to get so many kills. Oh my god. Alright, well, that is uh, it's going to do it. Wow. I mean, it's obviously not totally over. Six Storm there, by the way. Uh... But, I mean, this third base that Haji is desperately trying to hold on to, I don't know if that's going to be alive much longer. Yeah, this high Templar still trying to run away. It's kind of funny. It's moving just fast enough for the speed links to only attack it one at a time. So that actually nearly gets back home. But, I mean, just look at the amount of units coming across the map for Dragon. He's moving in for the Killing Blow. He's going into the 12 on cog position. Going to block off the army once again. Going to block off the probes. And this is just way too many units for Hadji to deal with. Yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, you storm and pray, but there's not even any storm up. So, oh my goodness, this is, uh, yeah, just tragic. By this time, if plus one hadn't been sniped, he'd at least be on plus two. Maybe he'd have another upgrade, but it would be just a lot more effective here. Either way, now he doesn't have a storm, he doesn't, or he doesn't have any Templar for storm. He doesn't have, he know, doesn't have Ravers two. either, so. Yeah. It's going to be very difficult to deal with just these lings, even. And it looks like the lings oh, coming in in such high numbers. The dragoons aren't able to really deal with them. The lings actually on plus one, plus two. I can't actually click them long enough. Yeah, plus one, plus two. And I mean, he is going to hold on with his dragoons and his cannons for now. But that's just round one. There's so many lings. Flooding out every single hatchery that Dragon has right now. You can see three hatcheries, four hatcheries even in the top right building. Nothing but lings. The lurkers diving on top of the cannons as well. A nice storm, but not going to be enough for Haji. He's losing all of his dragoons. And with that, it looks like Naz are going to take the series. 3-0. Yeah, a little bit of uh, fantasy GG timing here from Haji, but he is getting wrecked. This is so sick to watch from Dragon. Uh, just non-stop floods of Zerglings all the way over the map. Just uh, can't say enough how well played this game was. The timing to hit right before plus one. Oh, and the luck is on the impeccable. probes as well. Oh, and yeah, he's, that's he's a nice storm. One. That storm, storm got all four luckers. 
But yeah, I mean, this Ling's running into his main. GG! And Dragon takes down Haji to give the series for Naz. Uh, but of course, there is one more game remaining. Yeah, uh, there is one more game remaining, but it, the series will still go to Naz. And yeah. I said it in my opening kind of statement that White Clan, they've always performed incredibly well. They've got very strong players on the roster, and that uh, Naz was going to have to kind of climb up a rung on the ladder. They yeah. absolutely did that. Incredibly yeah. leveled up play, looked fantastic, so certainly a pleasure to watch. That definitely was. Now, we're also going to be heading into our final game uh, just after this, but it should be a very, very fun game to end off the series. So we'll be back in just a minute.